Hello, it's 2022. Happy New Year and welcome to Motors for the Masses. And today we have something that could be a rival for the favoured Yamaha YZF125 and the such like. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. One, two, five sports bikes have always been a popular choice, but have been somewhat shadowed by the likes of street bikes and scrambler types. Which is not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but that does mean that there's not a massive amount of sports bikes around for the 125 range now. Other than the likes of, of course, your Yamaha YZF and your Suzuki GSXR and KTM RC and things like that. However, there is now a bike from Sinis that could put you on a rival of those for more than £1,500 less. Let's find out what it is. It's this. Yes, it's the 2022 Sinis GPX 125. The Sinus GPX125 uses the same double overhead cam, four valve, four stroke, single cylinder, Euro 5 compliant liquid cooled engine that's in the Sinus terrain, developing 12.7 brake horsepower and eight pounds foot of torque. Now that does mean it is maybe two brake horsepower shy of the aforementioned bikes, but it should apparently surpass 70 miles an hour and is significantly cheaper. The bike has a six speed gearbox and a 12 litre fuel tank and on paper is said to do 78 miles per gallon, producing just 68 CO2s, which is nice, probably. You get upside down 48 millimeter forks on the front and a mono shock on the rear. Sturdy steel tubular frame and a rather robust looking steel swing arm. Using the combined brake system, you get a 276 millimeter disc on the front and a 220 millimeter disc on the rear. Wheels are 17 inch cast alloy, 100 by 17 on the front and a 140 by 17 inch on the back using CST rubber. Looks wise, it is a big bike. Looks big, feels big, feels sturdy, feels comfortable. The foot peg positions feel exactly where they should be. The handlebars feel comfortable. You're not hunched right over like a sports bike, but it's not upright like a sports tourer. It's just in the right position, to be honest. It does feel very comfortable indeed. Um, and it feels sturdy. Um, nothing is creaky or rattly about it. Um, that's just my trousers on the tank, so don't mind that, but yeah. Nothing is rattly and squeaky. It feels very sturdy. It feels light, but it's not overly light. And I'll tell you about the weight in a minute. Um, what I also like is how well made this yoke looks and as the uh, clip-ons and the switch gears. Um, they are quite generic switch gears, but they're solid. You know, nothing moves around, nothing is sort of loose on the handlebars. I love this big sturdy yoke, it feels very good quality and look at this dash isn't that just brilliant massive dash very clear very bright lots of information but without being overcrowded i really do like that very impressed with that 
as I am with the layout of the body panels. The tank is quite thin, very similar to the YZF, but it looks big width-wise when you're sitting on it. I mean, look at these body panels as well. I love the little vents in there. I love the um, lines and the way it's laid out. I really do like that. It's very impressive. Pan through to the back here. It's got a nice sharp back end. Again, very YZF-like. Um, and I'll show you the lights in a minute. They are really nicely laid out. And I just want to show you for a second the sturdiness of the plastics. Now, plastics do flex, of course, but they are very well made. They seem very sturdy, thick plastic, not chintzy, thin, flimsy, bendable plastic. Very good quality indeed. Certainly not what I expected, which was, let's be honest, early Motorini MRII thingy, MRRI, whatever it's called, that we did a long time ago with the higher sung. Um, really am impressed with the feel and the quality of the plastics. Um, as you know, plastics are flexible anyway, but they do feel pretty good quality indeed. And like a lot of modern bikes, the tank, of course, isn't a tank. It's plastic covers on a tank that's underneath. But that happens with a lot of bikes, especially in the 125 range. They've got a smaller 12 litre tank under there, but the tank would be tiny if it was just a 12 litre tank on a bike this size. So of course, to make the shape and to get the look of it, they add all these plastic bits to it. However, I do not like the chintzy red calipers. They're unnecessary. And I'm not a fan of the high-vis jacket stripes that are on it. But I do like this color, sort of a blue-gray, known apparently as ultimate gray. Um, but they also do it in black with mint green stripes. Now that looks nice, and here one is. Dimensions-wise, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Just over two meters long, 747 millimeters wide, and 1.1 meters tall. 816 millimeter seat height and a weight of 158 kilos. Now I am five foot ten and a half with a 31 and a half inch inside leg and this is what I look like on it. Um, my foot is on there, let's move that back a bit. There we go. So yeah, it fits me rather nicely and my feet are flat on the floor with a tiny bit of bend in my knee. So Anyone, I would say, from about five foot seven upwards should be fine on this. Now, if I was to put myself on tiptoes, I'm right up here, look. Plenty of space there. So it looks big, but it doesn't feel big when you're on it. No, no, it feels big, but it doesn't feel too big. There you go. What do you think of that? Now, before we take this out on the road and show you what it's like in the real world, I want to start it up, let you have a quick listen and show you these lights. Now, before I do that, there is an issue I'd like to talk to you about. Now, being a bike of Euro 5 ness and um, in this modern society of, um, oh, we must be safeguarding everybody in every eventuality kind of world that we live in, um, it's got a side stand switch which means you cannot start the bike with the side stand down, which means you can't warm it up unless you're sitting on it. You can't just let it idle before you get on it on the side stand. Now, I don't understand that. Yes, put a side stand switch in when it goes into first gear and it cuts out. Brilliant, do that. But don't have a side stand switch. That means even if it's on the side stand in neutral, it won't start. I don't get that. No big bike does that. You put it in gear and it cuts out. Perfect, that's the way it should be. Not just in neutral. And that is a bugbear for me, that annoys me. I think that should be sorted out. However, let's have a listen to it and show you these lights front and rear. So turn it on, let the fuel pump do its job, clutch in, and start. It has a one, two, five sound, but it doesn't sound horrendous. It doesn't sound hideous. It just sounds like every other one, two, five of these days. Lights wise, look at them. Brilliant. Love those. Main beam. 
just the lower lights going on and the flash there as well. I'm just going to whip it around and show you the back end. Whoa! Oh no, it's cut out because I put the side stand down. I hate that, I really do. Now the camera's not lined up. Let me move you over. Look at them! Love them! Brake lights, nice and bright. Really do like those. Very nicely laid out. And of course, as to be expected, the indicators are also LED, blah, blah, blah. They all are now. Now the other thing of it being Euro 5, it's got that exhaust the size of a house, but it is quite nicely laid out. It's a good shape. I did expect with this kind of shape back end to be there two exhaust exits, but you know, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, there you go. It's got an exhaust and it sounds okay and it looks good. Now it isn't stainless steel, but it seems pretty sturdy and it doesn't look chintzy and cheap. Uh, the welds look pretty good. Um, the way the exhaust bracket is made looks pretty sturdy. I do like these. They've got a bit of um, Zontis about them, haven't they? Um, nicely laid out, very good quality, nice and sturdy. Um, they do look, as I say, very Zontis. Um, the colour, mm, I don't know, but it does match, of course, the, um, the front forks. But um, maybe they could have been black. I don't know, powder coated black, perhaps. Um, maybe that would have been too much black. I don't know, it's not that bad. I just don't know if the grey, black and bronze goes okay, does it? I don't know, you let me know. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the colour arrangements. I'm nitpicking. I'm impressed overall. Although rather amusingly, the um, fluid does look like it comes from uh, the power station in Simpsons. It's a bit luminous, isn't it? Initially, it's very comfortable. The seat, even though there's not much of the seat there, it is comfortable. Now I pushed left there. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Right, 30 miles an hour in fifth gear, which is uh, interesting. 35 miles an hour in sixth gear feels comfortable. Um, I've adjusted the mirrors so I can see, and again, they're okay. I can still see glove and a bit of arm. Ah, oh, that's a stretch. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, I can still see. Um, tiny bit of vibration there at uh, 40 miles an hour in sixth gear. Let's go down, put the revs off a bit, see if that makes a difference. Yeah, a bit of vibration from the mirrors, but it's not horrendous. It just distorts like number plates and lights. You can still see behind you. Other than that, it feels very well balanced. Um, now bearing in mind, obviously, even though it's a demo bike, it's still a brand new bike. Where are you going? Both lanes, yeah? Okay. Okay, so let's see what this bike is like coming up to the roundabout. Brakes pull up okay. As I say, bearing in mind this bike is uh, being run in, it is a demo bike, so I can um, not destroy it, but I can certainly ride it decently. Well, takes the corners quite nicely, quite positive action there, in and out of the corners. No dramas there. Um, I'd say I'm enjoying the ride, to be honest. The gearing does feel a little bit 
um, I want to say high, short, that's the better word. The seat, even though it's, there's not much to it, it's quite comfortable, a uh, gel type seat. Uh, these are new tyres, so I'm not going to take it too drastic on the corners, on these damp roads. There's a decent note from that exhaust. Again, it sounds like a 125, but it doesn't sound farty. The dash, very easy to see. Very clear. You certainly know what's going on. You've got your gear indicator on the right-hand side, the clock, your overall miles, the speed, temperature, fuel gauge, rev counter. It's got everything you possibly need. I do like the way it feels. There's not any vibe through the handlebars. They're quite comfortable. And the position of them is comfortable as well. Now, I'm not a sports bike rider. Um, I prefer a slightly higher bar. But this is not uncomfortable. I'm not hunched over. My back doesn't hurt. My arms don't hurt. My wrists don't hurt. It actually feels very comfortable indeed. I would say, at this moment in time, it probably feels as though I'm more on a 300 than I am a 125, because it feels a big bike. Indicator action is very easy, gear change is very smooth, very simple, it's not clunky, it just slips into gear very nicely. There's not much to it, you don't have to lift it all the way up, it's a very short action very easy to use very impressed with the gear change the handling of the geometry feels just right feels like you can slap it into a corner very simply in a moment we shall get onto the uh, 60 miles an hour area and uh, see how it performs up to 60 and then uh, later on we'll take it onto the dual carriageway I don't want anybody screaming that it's a brand new bike that someone's going to have. It's a demo bike. It's going to be ridden by the press. Hard. And as I say, I know bikes need to run again. And I'm not going to destroy it. I'm not going to thrash it. But I am going to see what it'll do. Even if it's once. Okay. I am impressed with the how easy the switch gears are to use as well. Right, in a third gear, and let's take it up to 60. Oh, takes a minute or a second for the um, revs to drop off before you change gear, just be mindful of that. About 45 miles an hour in sixth gear here. Up to 50. Okay, I've got it pinned here, and I'm doing 50. I'm literally flat out in sixth gear, and it won't go over 50 miles an hour. So the 70 miles an hour feels ambitious at the moment. Now bearing in mind I am um, just under 16 stone. So as a little cruiser, it seems absolutely fine to be honest. It um, takes the corners very nicely. It uh, holds the road very well. Bearing in mind, as I say, this is a brand new bike on brand new tyres. And um, it's not the ideal of days. This is a muddy, wet road. And so I am going to be cautious, as should everybody. Um, I will take it up a little bit in the revs when I get to the dual carriageway and uh, we'll see 
if I can get closer to at least 60. Because uh, I don't know if that's just a running in thing or what, but uh, 50 miles an hour certainly isn't good enough. I do wonder whether the gearing needs changing because it does change the gears very quickly. So what I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to take it down in a second. I'm up through the gears here, fourth, fifth, I'm doing 34 miles an hour, sixth at 36 miles an hour, and the revs seem to go up, but the miles per hour don't. It's a very long sixth gear. Brakes are very good, very sharp, very easy to use. As I say, the handling is very nice. Takes the corners very confidently. As I say, bear in mind this is a new bike, new tyres. It's making the right noises but just not doing the correct amount of speeds to uh, go with those noises. And of course we've got a lot longer to go in the rev range, but not a, a massive amount until we hit the red line. It does turn in very sharply. Fifty-two in sixth. Got to ease off. Oh no, the corner's not there yet. Okay, just up this hill. The other side is the dual carriageway. So I shall go round the roundabout and see how we fare down the dual carriageway. I might have to duck down here. You do have to ease off the throttle quite a bit before you change gear because it's quite a, a long travel. Right, okay. Keep it in third to keep some of the revs up. And here we go, fourth. Fifth. Sixth of 57. 60. 61. 62. 63, 64, 65, it's touching on there. And I'm going to ease off there. 9,000 RPM, 65 miles an hour in sixth gear. So yes, when it's running, it will do 70. Okay, that's good. I'm pleased about that because I was concerned on that back road. So basically what you have to do is take it up in the revs. I didn't want to do it too much because obviously it still needs running in a bit more. But it will do 70 miles an hour. I can certainly see that happening. But you don't want to do it for prolonged periods of time because at 65 there I was doing just over 9,000 RPM so I was into the red line which means at 70 miles an hour, I'm going to be doing about 11,000 RPM, I should imagine. Possibly about 10,500. And that means you are constantly up at the top of the rev range for long periods of time if you want to do 70 for a while. I would say what would help this bike would be a different sprocket.
I'm actually pleased now, because I was concerned. Well, I have to say, I'm not disappointed. Now I know it'll do, bearing in mind, as I say, on the first ride out, I got 65, and I am, as I say, just under 16 stone, so I'm not the lightest of people. So if you are lighter than me, I should imagine you will get 70 without any dramas. Brilliant. Yeah, I'll just guess where you're going. Oh, indicate left and then turn around the roundabout. Amazing. Unbelievable. Indicate left at the junction you're going past. I was not being buffeted around at all when I was doing the speeds down the dual carriageway there. I was sitting solid. So it looks like the aerodynamics work really, really well. fairing was pushing the air straight over my helmet. I was not getting any extra wind noise than I'm getting at 40 miles an hour. I wasn't being battered around. I wasn't being pushed by the wind in any direction. It felt just right, to be honest. Now, another thing to say is when I was going down the dual carriageway there, I didn't get any extra vibe from the handlebars. All I've got is some numb fingers because I've got my thinner gloves on because it's easier to push the camera buttons, which means it's cold. Other than that, I did not get any extra vibe um, from the mirrors either. Uh, I can still see quite well out the mirrors. I can see my arm on my gloves, but I can also see behind me because they're quite wide mirrors and they're further away, so you're not looking at things very close up. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? I can still see cars behind me. Um, I can still see without uh, any interruption in the vibrations. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised by the uh, non-buffeting when I was uh, riding there. There's no vibes, there's no vibrations on the ass yet, yeah, just, oh, Jesus Christ. There's no vibrations from the uh, foot pegs that are going to um, upset me in any way. Oh no, I'm in sixth. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't get any vibrations from the seat either. Um, my nuts are still unbuzzy. Hmm, what don't I like? I don't like the fact that it revs so high in sixth gear with someone of my size on it. Um, I do think that could be sold with a sprocket change. I think with a different sprocket, we may be all right. Because all it'll do is give you a bit more on each gear. It'll take a bit longer to get up to 70, but I think you'll do it quite easily and you'll hit 60, no problem, I don't think, in fifth gear before you change into sixth if you do a sprocket change by one tooth, I would imagine. Obviously it needs a good test. They were talking about doing it on the terrain, um, so why can't they do it on this? Although that was the terrain T380. So yeah, maybe Sinus, if you uh, change the sprocket or offer that as an option, it could be a good idea. Um, other than that, I've got nothing bad to say about it. I like the way it looks. It feels nice, it sounds okay for a 125. That's Euro 5, you can't really get around that anymore. I'm not disappointed in any way. That is the only thing with changing the sprocket, is that this acceleration in the low speeds up to about 40 mile an hour will also take longer. And that's about right at the moment. That could be a little bit quicker, to be fair. Again, the engine does need running in properly. 
I am really surprised and pleased. As I say, I'm not uncomfortable either. I like the feeling. Handling is nice. It's smooth as well. It's not jerky. It's smooth. You know, weaving about here, I've got no worries that it's going to skip out on me. Very good. Well done, Senis. This is definitely, I think, the best bike yet. So, on that note, it's back to the, I'd like to say studio, but uh, back to the uh, cold garage. And we'll talk more about the price. So there you go, what do you think of that? Um, now the important bit, the price. £3,399 on the road with a two-year warranty. Now that is one year parts, labour and breakdown recovery and one year parts only. So there you go. There's the bike. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think of that. Now when you look at its rivals, it's significantly cheaper, and I want to throw the FB Mondial uh, Pagani in that mix as well. So basically, you've got a bike that performs up to 70 miles an hour and looks really good, is very well made, rides and handles really, really nicely. I'm very pleasantly surprised. I was worried that it was going to be a Sinus RSX that had been moved to accommodate some body panels, but no, really, really done a good job on this one. I'm actually very, very impressed. Um, but yeah, its rivals are gonna be four and a half to 5,000 pounds. So you're looking 1,500 quid around cheaper than its rivals. Okay, the other ones you may get 75, perhaps up to 80 miles an hour on. But let's be honest, 70 is where we need to be because that's the legal limit. I think, so I've heard. Yeah, it is, it is the legal limit and I'm very responsible and I only do 70 miles an hour, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, there we go. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm actually, as I say, very impressed and I think you would be too. Um, and that brings me to the end of this episode of Motors of the Masters. Thank you much for joining me. We are going to be back with those Mondials, the Enduro bike and the Supermoto. So please stay tuned for that. Unfortunately, people keep shoving these other bikes in my way and saying, film them, film them. And we're going to be coming up very soon with a big announcement. I can't say anything yet. I really want to say something, but I can't. And Malcolm and Jamie have said, no, don't say anything yet. Wait till it's organized first. But it's a really big announcement and it's gonna be epic. So please stay tuned for that. I wanna tell people. Plan first, make plans, make arrangements, make sure it's gonna happen, then announce it. I hear them. So yeah. That's it. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you have anything else, then please do that. If you want to support this channel, please do so by clicking the Patreon and our Facebook merchandise shop links below. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Click the notification bell so you get future videos pop up as well. And until next time, please ride and drive carefully, especially as winter is here now, apparently. Well, that was very sunny outside, but drive carefully. Ride and drive carefully, but have fun. I've lost my way now. Bye.